Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Aloha. Aloha. Hmm. You look rested. Oh, rosy cheeked. Yeah. I'm rested. Yeah. Have a little. You're tan. wrapping up the end of your week, first week back. Did you recover okay? I did. I Excellent. did. I recovered well. Came back to a, a a great opportunity to work with my clients again, work on my business again. I was happy to be here. Brilliant. And uh, my family was happy to have me. My dog was ecstatic. Oh, over the moon. <laughs> yeah. In dog so, years, yeah. you've been gone like 14. Oh, totally. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been great. So, it was a great vacation. And, um, you know, maybe next time I'll go back and actually, like, see the islands. Because this no time, pressure. I just really rested. I did a lot of resting. <laughs> That's good. That's what yeah. you're supposed to do. A lot of reading. So yeah. we are uh, we're headed up to Seattle, uh, actually to the San Juans to do a little resting just for the weekend this weekend. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to that for the same thing. Oh. I think I've been really vicariously just jealous of you getting away. Yeah. And it's time for me to, to you know, be vertical for a few days. That's going to be great. Absolutely. I've never yeah. been to the San, uh, San Juans. Is it beautiful there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, there's like 17, nice. I think they, the last count, there's 17 million little islands up there. I, that's the official total, 17, 17 million, million islands. Yeah, there's oh a lot gosh. of islands. Yeah, no, it's very that's dangerous. There's Some of them of are islands. very sharp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we we got a little Airbnb, and it has lots of windows. And what I'm, I think the weather is going to be too nice. You know, usually I like to have a little stormy weather in the, when we go up there, but I, I think it's actually supposed to be weirdly clear. One of the 14 days of clear, uh, clear skies that will that that area gets but i'm really uh, looking forward to it and so yeah. this is a great way to wrap up yes. to wrap up the week uh, is talking to you about some fun things uh before we do that head over to take control adhd get to know us a little bit better you can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list right on the homepage, and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released connect with us on twitter or facebook at take control adhd and if you really want to support us and tap into this growing group of adhders with some amazing insights and resources Jump over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast and subscribe there. You'll get access to a private Facebook group for the show and you'll be able to join us for our weekly live stream that we're recording right now. There are actually people watching us live and they're able to ask us questions and interact with us. We'd like to have a little chat after the show. Uh, and, you know, we've been doing this show for a long, long time. And those who have the means to contribute just a bit, it's incredibly rewarding and encouraging it helps us to keep growing, trying new things, learning how to be a better support for the ADHD community. So thank you so much to those who have already contributed. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, we, uh, you know, we do have some questions. Speaking of Patreon, we have some questions that have come from our patrons and we want to get to them. And the way we do it is we do it in the live chat after we finish the podcast proper. So if you're listening to the show and you're curious what these questions are, one of them's related to GTD. One of them's related to time blocking. But you don't get to know what they are until you support us over on Patreon. Uh, members in the live stream can always access this in the archive over on Facebook. Uh, and uh, they can see what those questions are. So stick around uh, for questions after the show. All right, Nikki. Yes. What color is your office? I don't remember. It's sort of a taupe. Uh, it's right? a grayish. Like the walls are kind of like a, um, it's a grayish tone. Against hmm. white, like the the paneling is white, and yeah. then I've got green accents. It's okay. actually very pretty modern looking. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like my office. I actually decorated it. Like I made a, a point to kind of decorate it. Yeah. Did you Did you think about color before you uh, started? Oh, of course. Um, I didn't think about color though, in the sense that you're probably gonna think about it i thought about it in a way of what do i like yeah <laughs> what's gonna make me right. happy and i love the gray because i've always that's just i guess well i shouldn't say i've always liked it i guess i'm definitely prone to what's sort of trending and mm -hmm. um you know if you watch fixer upper or any of those hgtv uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh shows which i do frequently on the weekends um that's a very popular color so of course i was drawn to it and then the green accents um i'll have to take pictures and i'll post the pictures um the green accents it doesn't sound like it would match but it's green and black with the with the the taupey 
Gray, I now say, I don't think it's taupey, but you made me think it might be taupey. Well, I think it's just more of the sort of rose color of the camera. Like it's it's just everything's oh, right. a little rosy to that gray. It makes it look a little taupey maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, I, I I just it just makes me happy to be here. Well, I like your office, too. It's it, it is. I, I think it's great. We'll see if it checks out in our color test today, I do want to talk about color. And I, I you know, actually two things, colors and symbols, uh, first of all. And we'll, so we'll start with symbols, which is, uh, you know, it, it got me thinking about the, uh, uh, our emoji conversation for those who saw the live stream last week, but we didn't post it in the podcast, uh, which was on uh, how we use emoji. And I think a lot of people, particularly people uh, of a certain age, maybe, uh, don't Are you talking about yourself? Of, shh. Okay. I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> Nikki. Uh, I, I I think you know we may not give emoji due uh, their their proper due, uh, mm-hmm. and I think it's it's worth actually thinking a little bit about emoji because I you know I use a th- apparently I use a thumbs up a lot. That's my that's my go to uh, you know emoji. I use sometimes I use actually the second most popular emoji that I use is the head exploding. <laughs> so oh, I don't know right. if that tells you anything. <laughs> That's uh, funny. I, I use that a lot. <laughs> thumbs um, up, everything's okay, and then your up, head then is, not is, okay. is exploding. So things are not it, okay. No, everything's and not there's okay. just like no gray area in between <laughs> either. It's just uh, yay, no, no. Um, and so I uh, I started using uh, emoji uh, a lot in an app called Slack, and Slack is a is a team collaboration tool, and uh, I have a number of clients and teams that are on. Uh, Slack. We use Slack to um, uh, to communicate, and one of the things that Slack does better than anyone else on a computer is using emoji. So when you download the app on the computer and you're typing along, type, 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 and you hit colon, and then the first letter that describes the emoji that you want, say colon R, it automatically pops up all the emojis that start with R. So like rocket and, you know, whatever, a radish. I don't know what all the R emojis are. But then you can just keep typing and it'll further self-select or just hit return and it'll take the top emoji from the list. It is just brilliant how it handles emoji picking. So that would be for your communication within a team though, right? So you're talking about if you're using Slack, then use the emoji because they make a, they do a really good job. Well, what I'm talking about more than anything else is how they implement emoji. And Mm -hmm. that unlocked emoji for me. Like I find myself using emoji more because I can do it quickly. I don't have to go up to a menu and click a little thing and open up the keyboard viewer and then search for the emoji I want and then click and then copy and paste or drag it in. Like on a computer, it's generally more complicated to use emoji than it is on our mobile devices, on our phones. Well, Slack got it right on the computer. Whatever you think about the app, the app is kind of flaky. It crashes. It uses a lot of resources, whatever. But man, when you're just typing quickly and you want to type a quick message with an emoji, it gets it right. So Mm -hmm. I started using emoji in Slack. Then I discovered uh, some uh, enterprising nerd posted me to a wonderful little app called Rocket uh, for the this is for the Mac. It is amazing because what it does, it, it's a little menu bar thing and it runs in your up in your system always on. It makes Slack style emoji picking available everywhere on your system that you can type. So in a Word or Pages document, on a website, in a form field. In- and this is something you download. Yeah. Rocket yeah. And it's available for download. free. You can pay the guy five bucks and it'll unlock a full little search application. Link is going to be in the show notes. Um, Do you remember when I sent you an emoji and I thought it was something else and it was actually like a, a flag or it was like the what was it? Do you remember that? <laughs> it was like the Ecuadorian flag or something. Yes. Yeah. And I thought it was something else. And you're like, yeah. why are you sending me this flag? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Well, anyway, and so now sorry. <laughs> we look at it. Look at the finder here. This is the thing that has really helped me. Be- and, and this is the trick. This is the only reason I wanted to talk about emoji today was because of this trick. Yeah. When you are uh, now that I can put emoji easily wherever I want them, I can put them in my uh, in my file system. 
And so I have this one giant current directory of everything that I'm doing, right? This is all my client work, all my projects, everything. And now I have them filtered because I can say like, here are the, I have a mortar board here, uh, emoji for the places where I'm teaching. I have headphones that precede all of the podcasts that I do. I have musical notes for my guitar music and practice tools. I have, I have a really, really strong man before my Pete's workouts folder. I have a business building for all of my clients, like all of my, uh, the, the clients that I'm working with right now. I have, you know, uh, the uh, classes I'm taking, games, family stuff. These emoji work just like letters in the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So even though N and P and P and R and S and T, they, they might not be uh, specifically, you know, they're alphabetical only because they follow this headphone which is a character, effectively, the file system sees it as a character and sorts them together, which is what I want. I want to see right. all my podcasts because it lets me see them without the distraction of seeing all the other stuff. Right. And right. so that was the that was the hot tip around symbols that became really important to me. I also and that also leads into color, which is what I want to talk about today. OK, so this is why I started thinking about color. Uh, because I start started using color in the file system, and then it got me thinking, you know, my office is kind of drab. I actually used to really like it. It looks kind of like parchment if you're in here. It looks like a kind of parchment paper, and it's, it's, it's very classy, but it's looking kind of weathered. It's been like this for a long time. Maybe I should start looking at, at painting my office a new color and kind of go along with my new sort of, you know, a little bit more vibrant. So I started looking into color. Oh, my goodness, Nikki. Oh, my goodness. A lot of psychology behind it, right? <sighs> Well, psychology and color therapy being used in the treatment of ADHD. And this is where we need to talk today. Wow. So, mental and emotional uh, effects of color on sighted people uh, is something that is widely documented. Uh, warm colors, reds, yellows, oranges, they tend to stimulate feelings of comfort and warmth all the way to hostility and rage and anger, frustration. Uh, cool colors inspire this sort of range from calmness to to sadness, right? I mean, that's that's cool. The blues, mm -hmm. teary eyes. Mm -hmm. Green is one of those interesting colors because uh, it, it actually has a a documented effect on the retina, right? So green focuses the color the, uh, right in the retina, and it is it causes less strain on the eye muscles. So it is documented and highly recommended that if you're feeling super stressed, have a pure green card handy, a nice, beautiful, warm green, and stop and look at green for 30 seconds to two minutes, and it, it can help you relax a little bit. It can help you focus. It can relax your eyes and your head. Uh, it, interesting stuff, right? It is, and I am so glad that you said that to look at green because at first I thought you were going to say green makes you feel more stressed. And that was going to worry me because I have a lot of green in my office. But that's not right. the case. No, that's not the case. And so in fact, good. you want bigger panels of green. You want to be able to fill really your field with green. Right. And that's that's Focus and so green kind of became one of the top candidates for uh, a new color in my office. Wouldn't that be kind of a bold change? Everything's green. Uh, what about yellows and oranges, right? This is one of those interesting ones. What does yellow and orange do for you? Well, uh, I found this quote on a color, uh, this wonderful art therapy or color therapy site. Uh, you want to be careful about using bright colors like orange and especially yellow. They reflect light more excessively, stimulates a person's eyes, which can lead to irritation. You also don't want to paint your dining room or kitchen these colors if you're a calorie counter. They make you hungry. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of it, that's interesting, too, because you, you have a high percentage of people whose kitchens are bright yellow, like a vibrant bright yellow. And and it's great, I guess. Just don't spend too much time in there because then you're not only hungry in this bright yellow room. You're also in the same room where the food is. So, right, right. You know, something to consider. It's not setting you up for success. Right. 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 So I want to do a, I want to do a quiz. OK. For, for you. OK. This is for you. All right. It's not it's uh, don't worry. The stakes are very low. You can't really fail. I guess you could fail, but it's not really that serious. Look, I have all these colors. We're going to run down some colors and I want you to tell me what you think of. And we're going to associate kind of the, the the psychological and emotional effects with these colors. What are the feelings you expect to get out of these colors? Oh, I know. This oh, no. is great. Okay. Then we're going to talk about the specific ADHD issues. Uh, but first, remember, 
colors come with a lot of emotional baggage. They really do. And so they mean different things to us. They can inspire different feelings because of our upbringing, our location. There's a lot of factors at work. Uh, so this is just sort of broadly accepted uh, uh, reaction to colors. And and art therapy, color therapy in particular, is very broad. So there's some scientific data around sort of how color in the works in the eyes and in the brain. But as soon as you start talking about, you know, emotional response to color, uh, it, it gets a little bit murky. So just know that that's that's something that, that your mileage may vary. So this is very okay. broad. And what am uh, I supposed discussion. to do? You're going to tell me a color and I'm supposed to do what? I'm going to tell you a color and you're going to tell me what you think it, that color means and inspires in you. OK. All right. Let's start with white. What does white represent? I think it represents like openness, like it's it's open. It's large. Like, you know, so, you know what? Yeah. You're so right. Sense of space, openness, yeah. a yeah, sense space. of space. It's also obviously the color of neutrality, right? White flag. Right. Uh, it's, right. A sen- it's a color of purity and innocence, mm-hmm. right? It gets it, it makes you feel youthful, right? In mm-hmm. some cultures, it's also the color of mourning. And I don't mean mourning like the hills are alive in the morning. I mean mourning, M O U R N. In some cultures, white is the color of, of mourning the loss of, of another or sadness, or grief. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. How about black? You know, black is tricky because I, I, I wear a lot of black. Like I almost always wear something black Mm -hmm. every day. Um, so clothing wise, it's one of my favorite colors because it, it kind of goes with everything. How does it make you feel? Well, um, I, I feel, how do I feel? That's hard because I think that it's kind of the opposite a little bit of white. Like black feels a little bit more um, controlled. Like it feels a little bit more tighter in the space, right? If you're looking at space, it's going to be a mm-hmm. little bit more um, uh, packaged. Okay. <laughs> I don't All know right. how else to say that. No, no, no. But, I, I think that's great. It, yeah. it's, it is, it's thinning. It's slimming. Like it's oh, a constraining good. color. Yes, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, it is this. It is the color of strength and power and authority. Black. <gasps> it 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 promotes a th- or it it emotes sort of authority and control. It's also the color of evil. That's, well, you, I'm not you evil. Kind of get that. You're not. Evil. <laughs> You're not evil. In other no. cultures, in contrast to white, it's the color of death or mourning. So, which makes uh, sense because you do wear black when you go to a funeral. That's, that's sort right. of what you're supposed to be doing, right. and that's very easy for me to do. And there are times where I've worn black to a wedding, and I've thought about that because I have like a black yeah. dress that uh-huh. that I've worn to a wedding, and I thought, I wonder if I should not wear this black dress. Right. And then I and then I said, no, I'm going to wear it because I felt good in it because I felt like it made me look thinner. Yep. That's really funny. That's right. Okay. How about gray? Mm-hmm. Now we're right in the middle. Yeah. I almost feel like um, it is. It's right in the middle. It's like, you know, when you talk about black and black and white thinking and you want to mm-hmm. kind of, you know, open yourself up to the to the gray area. Like gray area to me is like a little bit unknown. Um, neutral, uh, right? Neutral, it's, it's but neutral. it's flexible. It's not a threatening color to me, but to some people. Maybe it would be because it's hard to go to that gray area hmm. when you're Interesting. a black and white thinker. It's it's generally uh, that sense of neutrality. It's also timeless. Right? It's mm-hmm. it's a practical color. It's practical because it can go with anything. Uh, right. But there's there's no real it, it's that neutrality. It's kind of like, you know, there's no real emotional reaction to to gray. It's just gray. It is what it mm-hmm. is. But then we get into the, the primaries. Red. Rapid fire. Red. Yeah, red is actually one of my favorite colors, especially as accents in my house, um, because we have we have a mustery yellow warm color on the wall. So it mm-hmm. looks really well with red. Um, I remember being in an art class in middle school and we were learning about colors and they always said red is the one that stands out. Like if you're in a room and everybody has a different color, colored shirt, the red one's going to stand out probably most likely first. Mm-hmm. So I just remember it as being so because of that, I kind of look at it as sort of its own independent color. Um, yeah. But then I also look at it as pay attention. Like this is mm-hmm. important, right? So if if it's the first thing that you notice, 
if I have something that's important for me to do, it's probably going to have a red dot or it's going to have a little stop emoji next right. to it because it's going to draw my attention to it immediately. Well, and that's exactly what it does. It is this, it's the color of excitement. It's a color of attention. It's the color of intensity. It's color of love and romance, right? Obviously, right, that's right. kind of a natural in, in many cultures. Uh, it, it is the, it, it, it can be a color of comfort depending on the hue. Uh, but it is generally a color of lifting spirits rather than subduing them, right? Mm-hmm. And that'll come into play in a little bit. Same with orange. Color mm-hmm. orange is is kind of a as a variant of that. It's happy. It's energetic. It's mm-hmm. exciting. The color orange. It's a color of enthusiasm and warmth. It's also the color if you if you go a little bit further into the the woo woo. It's the color of wealth and prosperity. Mm-hmm. It's the color orange. Uh, it's a color of sophistication. Believe it or not, uh, it's a color of change. Orange mm-hmm. represents change. Uh, so orange spaces are great spaces for transformation, for doing something, building something. It is a stimulating color. Again, that'll come into play. Color yellow, we've talked about, right? It's, it's, it is another stimulant color, but it's a color of hunger, right? It's a color of, that's gonna, that's gonna stimulate your, your appetite. Um, it, it can also be that sort of attention getting color, can also be an angry color, yellow, uh, mm-hmm. depending on pairing. And, and we've talked about green, right? It's that neutral colors, color of growth and health and, and tranquility and harmony, uh, calmness. The nice thing about color is it can do all those things, but it's not a sedative color, right? It's not a color that when surrounded in green, you're naturally going to fall asleep, right? It's gonna, not going to make you sleepy. It's just going to calm the, the, calm the energy. Uh, how about blue? I think I have a little bit of a, um, a, a bias here only because you mentioned it before and you're like, you know, I'm feeling blue. So now yeah, I'm right, looking at blue right. thinking, oh, it's sad. But I don't think of blue as sad. Like I can see, you know, yes, when you're, when, you know, do you have the blues? We kind of associate that with being sad. Um, but I don't. And I think why, because it's one of my husband's favorite colors. And so it brings him joy. So to me, blue is not a bad color or, or yeah. it doesn't, gen- it does, doesn't generate those feelings for me. Um, yeah. Well, and and to that point, I mean, it is the color of calmness, of serenity, right? Yeah. It's a it's a peaceful color. It's a very peaceful color, and and uh, it's also the color of of loyalty, right? I mean, in terms of again the the sort of belief systems that go with color, it's a color that inspires that sort of trust. Uh, mm-hmm. It it also inspires focus. Hmm. So that's an interesting, but not uh, quite so much as if you if you want to find yourself in a creative space, in your most creative, sophisticated and wise space, you're going to move on from blue and head straight to purple. That is that is the color of sophistication and wisdom and prosperity and respect. It's also kind of a color of mystery and it's wildly underused in those contexts. But yeah, um, but but it, it if you surround yourself in a nice purple um uh, and I guess maybe you listen to some Prince music. That goes to How about brown? <laughs> brown is interesting. It, it is, it's one of those that uh, that is well, also underused. Well, when you underused. think of the brown emoji, it's poo. Yeah, it's poo. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but it actually is a color of stability and friendship, brown. And, yeah, and I would so, not have thought of that at all. Yeah. I don't associate brown with friendship. If you think of browns and taupes in a, in a, like a living space... Uh, they can be very warm. They can be very welcoming. They can be very sort of familial. Uh, so that those are just sort of the overriding kind of emotional connections, yeah, some of them so that, that are associated with colors. But let's look at treating conditions like ADHD with color. It's a practice called chromotherapy, and there are some unique characteristics at play. First, uh, orange is used to improve alertness and mood, right? We talked about orange as a stimulant. Uh, it, it's used to treat depression, too, but... Orange can fatigue and confuse. And if you use too much of it, or if you paint your your most important spaces orange and you live with ADHD, it can be very challenging to find focus well, uh, over a long period. Right. That yes, makes sense. Right? Okay. So it, it may lift you up when you first walk in there, but if you're in there for long periods, it can be very, very challenging. So yeah. Sometimes if you want to just perk yourself up and wake yourself up, have a nice orange card and just stare at an orange card for 30 seconds or two minutes. Seriously, that's that's the recommendation is yeah. use these colors uh, as they're associated. It's, a, you know, sort of non-medical intervention for a quick boost. Uh, we talked about yellow. Yellow, again, it, in this case, it's used to boost the nervous system. Uh, but if you give so it's a, a stimulant, it's a heavy stimulant color. If you give yellow 
you should put an ADHD ear in a yell, especially an inattentive ADHD ear. Uh, that aggravates poor concentration, right? So don't paint your office yellow. You think you want a bright, shiny, lifty, uppy color, but that's going to work against you in the long run, right? It's going to it's going to prevent you from focusing. Uh, you're going to be mad, and challenge. you're not even going to know why. Right? You're not even going to know why. You're not <laughs> yeah. going to know why. And that's, I think, the most interesting thing out of this yeah. whole lesson. Green considered to create a positive, calming effect without causing sedation. It's a big deal. It improves concentration in ADHD ears. Uh, blue, again, most common color used for ADHD treatment. It relieves anxiety and stress and tension and migraines and is considered excellent in putting the mind in a state of calm. So you can imagine my, you know, my interests are creativity and uh, I want to be relaxed and relieve the anxiety that I live with. Uh, and so the colors that I'm looking at, blue, green and purple I, I got to change my office up, Nikki. It's time. Yes, you do. You it's do. Time. Yeah. So I, I, I will tell you as a bit of a caveat, I was not able to find a single stitch of solid scientific uh, research data supporting the effect of color on ADHD. So everything we're talking about is based on the practical reporting of those in the field, people who use chromotherapy in their psychotherapy practices. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, normally I hate it when I can't find a study to back this stuff up. Uh, but my own experience with color and my conversations with therapists who are, are deeply in, into color and using it for treatment uh, is such that I feel like we we can't really ignore the results. Still, the primary message here is that your mileage may vary. Our collective human experience suggests that this is something worth considering when you're looking at how color impacts your life and your attention and your energy uh, and so on. Yeah. So I, I hope this is a useful and, and oh, semi-inspirational really topic. It's different. It's a different topic. We certainly yeah. have never talked about it before. And I think it's interesting. And I think it's just like anything. You have nothing to lose. To, to try right. it and see what you think. I mean, even right. it's just subtle little things, you know. Um, so, yeah, this is great. And I'm so glad I picked green as an accent color yeah. and not orange or something that's really going to. Yeah, as a stimulant. I, I think yeah. I have too much orange in my room. What I love here is that I also have my hue lights and yeah. I have been working. Uh, you, you know, I, I actually change up my lights depending on what I'm working on. And um uh, it's really nice to be able to cycle through these different scenes depending on the mood. And when I want mm -hmm. to, you know, when I want to relax but not go to sleep, I, I, to be able to move to a slight green tint is mm -hmm. is something I'm going to be practicing more. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Pete. I love it. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to the show. We certainly appreciate your time and attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.